Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to look at all the champions who were recently crowned at the World Championships. Each have their own unique style and I've ranked this video from best performance to worst performance so it may be a little controversial and let me know what you think about that. But anyway, let's get into it. The number one best performance from the champions I thought was Fonseca from Portugal. He just had an amazing day throwing everyone for Ipon. And Fonseca's judo, it's beautiful to watch. He always goes for the throw. Big powerful guy, likes his sodes. And really uniquely, he mixes up uh, sode with an osoto. So lots of people think he's going to jump in for that big osoto gari that he does. They step that foot back and then he turns in for a seo inage like you see here. Anyway, so the way I've done this video is I've looked at all their matches throughout the day, taken in the totality of that, looking for uh, Ipons or Wazadis, uh, as many throws as possible is usually a good thing. But I've also looked at the final, how did they perform in the final, it's kind of important too. So against Coral here, uh, it's just so funny in this next throw, he gets thrown by a Sode, and then Coral just, he just cannot believe it. There's that Osoto fake into a Sode, but Coral shaking his head, and he can't believe it. Anyway, Fonseca in the final, uh, turns up with this Wazari, a nice Sode here. But then, even a Wazari up, he doesn't play the Shido battle. Goes in for this amazing uh, Kochigari. Look at this. Boom. Real powerful Kochigari there. So, uh, Fonseca, my number one champion at the World Championships. Fabulous performance. And let's get into number two. Maruyama from Japan. World champion, but not going to the Olympics. How crazy is that? And a little diff different to Fonseca, Maruyama has more of a finesse to his judo, more uh, technical precision. Look at the way he does these footsteps. He's like dancing around his opponent. And uh, different though to Fonseca, Maruyama had no ipons throughout the whole day. So I think he was facing a lot of tall people like Flicker and Yondon Perenlai and just couldn't couldn't get the lift to to score for Ipon with his Uchimata, his Tokui Waza. But uh, he was constantly attacking throughout the whole day. His performance against Yondon Perenlai was just incredible. The amount of attacks he went in for and never got countered, uh, never looked in danger. He looked like he was always in control of every contest. So, I mean, look at this. Faking and jumping in, going for a Tomoe Nage. Doesn't go to the Newaza, just goes again. Here's another sequence, foot sweep, fake the Osoto, stepping in for Uchimata, hopping it in. So just such great var variety from Moriyama and probably him and Fonseca were the most exciting guys to watch on the day. So I think number one and two is pretty justified. Moriyama, Fonseca. Uh, two and one, respectively. And another thing that sealed the deal for Mariyama was he took out Lombardo. And Lombardo, going into the Olympics, it's him and Abe. So a real justification for Mariyama that, you know, if he was in the Olympics, pretty sure he would take gold. Pretty sure he would take gold, but uh, unfortunately, it's Abe, and that's okay. So number three, Cassie. And Cassie is a very different judoka to Maruyama and Fonseca. He has strong newaza to start with, and he, I wouldn't say plays the Shido game, but he plays the game very well. He really gets a Shido to his name. And uh, this performance against Fujiwara was incredible. Looking for a Uchimata to a Tomoenage to an Amba there. And I definitely think throughout the day, uh, Cassie, he probably faced uh, the hardest competition. I think the people he had to go through were some real killers. And to come out of the other side of that as a champion is quite amazing. Obviously here meeting Fujiwara, 
in the quarterfinals and then pulling out these big attacks, not scoring, but I think mentally, you know, it just shows that Cassie was ahead in this fight. Even if he didn't score, he's launching these attacks. So a uh, great performance against Fujiwara. And then he had to face Boltabayev and Boltabayev has been incredible recently. And then after getting through Boltabayev, he had to face Grigalashvili in the final. And so he pulls this out. Grady Pawn, so Cassie, number three for me. Right, next up, number four, and that's Shrazushvili from Spain. Kind of a unique judoka in my opinion. Really, really tall, but he likes uh, big hands around the back and these big ogoshis, koshigurumas, also does a bit of sumigaishi. But yeah, Shrazdushvili, he just got better as the day went on. Uh, it's up against Nagasawa now in the semi-final and if you've seen him do this to Nagasawa before uh, you'll know that Shiraz Dishvili has a really 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 good uh, Oboshi Koshiguruma just this is incredible so Nagasawa this has happened to him before and if you get thrown once okay but if you get thrown twice you know that's a really good technique so Shiraz Dishvili he's really refined this technique it's a really good one. It might win him a gold medal at the Olympics. It's these kind of techniques that, you know, people just can't stop. And it's what gets people like Shiraz Dishvili really, really far on the judo circuit. So here he is again, hand on the belt. And the Mongolian, he can't do anything to stop it. So he's really using his length to his advantage. And uh, this is a big reason why I put him at number four. Just... An incredible final to take out Bobanov and to take him out with an Ochigari like this. A smothering Ochigari. So he's working off that grip that he loves. You always got to play to your traits, play to your style, your strategy. What do you like? And Shirazu Philly loves that grip. That's a serious Ochigari. Look at that. So Shirazu Philly, number four for me. But it was kind of nitpicking between uh, number three, four, and five. I think they all had uh, equally pretty amazing performances. Maybe Cassie just nudged out uh, Shiraz Yusvili. But anyway. Right next up, number five, Abduladzi from Russia. And another really unique judoka. He probably strings together Newaza and Tachiwaza better than... Uh, anyone I've ever seen before. Cassie does it, but Cassie does it in a kind of a uh, traditional way, like tomoinage into arm bars, or just, you know, looking for uh, submissions on the ground. But Abdeladzi, he is like a cat. He's jumping on people, he's rolling out of stuff. I'd love to know what the problem was here between these two, but uh, let me know, guys, if anyone knows. Anyway, uh, Abdeladzi, he's got a really serious... Uh, also Dogadi and in the final he managed to pull it out and it was quite incredible really against the Kazakhstan fighter here look at this turning into Harai going again spinning around and finally gets the Wazari so Abdeladzi I think he's hooking the leg there is that not illegal lots of illegal talk recently look he's hooking it again that is illegal I'm pretty sure that's illegal anyway guys uh, Great Newaza, great Osotogari, and nice transitions. So Abdeladzi, number five. Right, next up is Kageura. And I feel like Kageura, he kind of played it safe a bit. He was uh, playing the Shiro game, definitely against Silva. Uh, I can understand that Kageura, he, he is really small for the heavyweight division, and he has to do what he's got to do to win. Uh, but... I don't think he has the throwing prowess of uh, the other guys and the, the lighter weights. But, I mean, I'm sure that's just, that's just his, his build. He finds it hard to throw these big guys. I mean, he tries, he gets some wazaris, uh, and he uses it to transition into his newaza. But overall, I think he played it a little bit safe. And uh, in the final, it was really, really close against Bashaev from Russia. And I did say I was kind of looking at the entirety of the day, but also looking at the final as well. 
often the final kind of has a lot of impact on people's impressions. People, sometimes only people watch the finals, uh, but the final, it was okay. And at the end here, I mean, Kagura was already up, just kind of defending, you know, and then Bashaev, he gets a nice little lock on the arm, rolls him over, and almost holds him into Neweather. So this was kind of my final moment, my final impression of Kagura on that day. He still won, but yeah, number six. And last guys, Shavdat Tuashvili from Georgia. This might be a little bit controversial. He took out Siloglu, which I always like, and had a tough match against Angvari, but uh, definitely he won the most contests by Shido. And I think he just kind of played a veteran game. I mean, he's Olympic champion. Uh, he knew what he was doing throughout the entirety of the day, but he really only had uh, one nice piece of Newaza and two throws. One for Wazadi, one for Ipon. This is the Ipon here. But, I mean, it was kind of a workhorse performance. So, especially up against Angvari, it was a really, really long match, deep into golden score. Just relied on his stamina, looked busy, looked active, but didn't really look like he could throw Angvari. And then the final as well just ended up uh, three Shiro's for a win. But, uh, you know, a veteran play. He did what he had to do, and to be world champion and Olympic champion, I mean, that's an incredible resume. And I think 10 years down the road, people won't remember the details. They'll remember the accolades. So, uh, great work nonetheless. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know what you think. Were my rankings okay, or were they a bit silly? I mean, it's just a little bit of fun. They're all great champions, and uh, we'll see how many of them stay world champions or even take Olympic gold uh, in the next couple of months. So, all right, guys, like, subscribe. I'll see you later.